All right, this video is an example of a full thermochemistry problem. Uh, this process uh, is done throughout the world of chemistry. And uh, what we're doing is we're going to understand how the energy from a chemical reaction, in other words, making and breaking bonds, can be used to heat up, uh, in this case, some water. And we're gonna, in the end, calculate how hot the water actually gets. So where we're gonna start is uh, what I wanna know is I want to know how hot 1,000 grams of water will get. And my reaction is going to be a synthesis reaction. We're going to take solid sodium and react that with gaseous chlorine and uh, put those whole things together. And so we need to keep in mind a couple of things. We're going to go uh, out on the internet and look up delta H, which is the amount of heat generated from this particular reaction. It's an exothermic reaction, and so it generates 411. It's negative because it gives off. It's losing that heat. So that's why it's a negative. 411 kilojoules, thousand joules. And the specific heat of water, we're going to need that later on, is 4.186. And that is joules per gram. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got to do two processes. One is stoichiometry. One is calorimetry. So let's do the stoichiometry first. Uh, our normal process, we're going to write down the reactants, an arrow, and write the product. Remember, the metal comes first. All right, step three, look for diatomics. Well, chlorine is diatomic, so it needs a two. The other one is with a friend. The sodium, so it does not need a two. We have to balance the molecule. Sodium is plus one, chlorine's minus one. One and one, those numbers cancel. Let's balance the whole equation. Two chlorines on the left, we need two on the right. So we need two sodiums, and we've already got two chlorines there. All right, balanced equation, we always have to have that. And we're gonna add the delta H value right here. We put it on this side of the equation, 411. And because we put it on the right side of the equation, we're already taking into account that it's giving off the heat. So we don't have to put in the negative. All right, let's go ahead and set up the problem. All right, remember, moles are on top. None of this has changed from what we've always done in the past. Grams down below, okay. And then remember over here is gonna be Q. All right, so let's go ahead and get going. Uh, let's start with how much we were given. We, uh, uh, I think we'll start with 46 grams of sodium and we'll start with 140 grams of chlorine. And I've just decided what those are. So 140 grams there and 46 grams there, all right. So we have to go to our periodic table and look up sodium. If you do that, you'll see that one mole of sodium has a mass of 23 grams. And this is two chlorine atoms in one mole of chlorine. So that is 35 plus 35 is going to be 70. Sodium chloride, that's going to be 23 for the sodium, 35 for the chlorine. That is, uh, how about 58 grams for one mole of sodium chloride. All right, our next step, we just got to do some division right here. 46 divided by 23, put the answer up here, 2. 140 divided by 70, move the answer up there. Uh, and that one is also 2. 
And so let's go ahead. I'm going to use uh, some blue here. We're going to circle these top two sets of numbers, these ratios. Do some division up here. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2. Which number is smaller? That one is. Okay, so that one is the one that is limiting. So that's the one we're going to use when we go figuring out all these things over here. All right, so 2 over 2. 2 over 2 equals, remember this is x. That's one thing we need to figure out. Equals x over 2. And I think you can see with a little cross multiplication, it's 2 moles of sodium chloride. Well, let's go ahead and finish that one quick because we know to come down here, we multiply 58 for each one of them, and we said we have two, so 58 times two is 116 grams. So that's how many grams of salt this reaction produces. Now let's do the last part of it over here. Uh, we need to figure out Q. Well, let's see, we're gonna again use the two over two, that was our limiting one, is going to be equal to Q over 411. And I think if you do a little cross multiplication there, you'll find out Q is actually equal to what we started with, 411. All right, I'm going to use a different color here, some green, because we need this number. That number, Q, we're going to come down here and we're gonna use our calorimetry equation. Remember our calorimetry equation is Q equals MC delta T, that change in temperature. Well, in this case, we know Q, but there's a unit change. Q up on top and Q down below, we have to multiply by 1000 as we bring it down. So it's not 411, it's 411 thousand. All right. And that's because uh, our equation with Q equals MC delta T is in calories or in joules, while up above, notice it is in kilo joules. So kilo means a thousand. That's why we multiply by a thousand. All right. The mass we said up above, we were going to start with 1000 grams of water, 1000. C, specific heat of water, we said is 4.186. And the change in temperature, how much the water is going to warm up. So we just do some uh, multiplication and division in here. And what you're going to find is that the temperature of the water changes by 98 degrees. So what we figured out very first, your whole big thermochemistry problem, if we took 46 grams of sodium, reacted it with 140 grams of chlorine, and gave all that heat to one liter of water, that liter of water would either boil or come very, very close to boiling because it would warm up by 98 degrees Celsius.